SEO is tough and usually requires a big team. Wouldn't it be great if there was a way to do SEO when you're a solo entrepreneur? Look, there is. Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel and today I'm gonna break down a realistic approach to SEO for busy solo entrepreneurs. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. If you don't have a big team or any team for that matter of fact, I want you to focus just on two things. Number one, optimizing existing content and number two, creating new content. So let's go over optimizing existing content first. First, use Google Search Console. Google Search Console will show you, hey, what content is getting impressions and which content is getting clicks and also shows your click-through rate. What impressions mean is someone's searching on Google for a keyword that you're ranking for and they may or may not click on your site. The clicks is a percentage of those people, what the percentage is, they're actually clicking over to your site, right? They're typing in a keyword, they click, those are the number of clicks you get. And the click-through rate just takes, you know, your clicks divided by your impressions and it gives you a ratio like 20%, 10%, 2%. And I want you to improve your click-through rate. And the way you end up doing that is, look at the keywords that are sitting on page two. Are those keywords in your title tag? Are they within your meta description? Is your title tag and meta description you know, very relevant from a appealing perspective? Think of copywriting. How can you persuade someone to click through? You don't wanna use clickbait in the sense that you dupe them into clicking, and then when they go to the page, they don't find what they're looking for, but you wanna use persuasive copy. The next thing I like doing is putting in the keywords that you're seeing in Google Search Console within to those pages as well. So now that you just put them in your title tag and meta description, also put them within the content. Sometimes you already have those keywords, sometimes you won't. Just make sure they're in there and you're covering that topic because that'll help you rank higher. Second, use Ubersuggest. Ubersuggest has a rank tracking feature that you can get started for free and you can see which ones of your keywords are getting more traction and less traction over time. It'll tell you which keywords are getting more traction on mobile or even desktop devices or even in certain regions. Another feature I want you to use in Ubersess is a content ideas report. This shows you all the other people that have content around similar keywords like your competitors. And it'll even show you their social shares and the backlinks and the headlines that they're using. What's cool about this, it'll give you more keywords that you can end up using within your article, give you headline ideas based on what's popular on the social shares, and you can even email the people that are linking to your competitors and hit them up and ask them to link to you. Third, use Google Analytics. I want you to improve your dwell time. I want you to identify the content pieces that are underperforming and consolidate them with the pages that are doing well on the same topic. Look, even if you have a page that has 100 backlinks and another one with 10 backlinks, it doesn't mean the one with 100 backlinks is gonna get more traffic. If you found that the one with 100 backlinks is getting two visitors a month, does it really matter if it's getting 100 backlinks? No, 301 redirected to the one that's getting, 10 vis uh, that's getting way more visitors, hundreds of visitors, and that one has, is very similar, it's almost on the same thing, just 301 redirect the one that has way more backlinks into the one that has less backlinks, and you should see your overall traffic go even higher on that page. Now let's go over creating new content. First, let's find keyword opportunities that you can rank for. Go to Ubersess, use a keyword ideas report you can find in the left-hand navigation, and type in keywords related to your space. You'll see more keyword recommendations from questions, prepositions, comparisons, related keywords, there's many different tabs, and it'll show you the keyword difficulty for any of those keywords and how hard or easy it is to rank. What's cool with Ubersuggest is you can actually put in your domain name and it'll show you the probability of ranking on page one and it'll then filter all those keywords based on what'll work for you, based on your domain authority, based on how old your site is, so that way you have the highest chances of ranking. It's a cool little feature that we recently added and I love it. Then I want you to go to the competitive analysis report in Ubersuggest this is where you can put in a competitor URL. It'll show you their top pages by traffic, show you the social shares for those pages, and it'll even show you all the keywords that the competitor's page ranks for. And then you can go over to their site and look at that page and be like, oh, this is the content that they have. I can create something way better than this. And then I want you to go and create something way better than it. 
And I want you to hit up everyone that links to the competitor because you can see the people who link to your competitor in Ubersys and hit them up and ask them to link to you. Second, let's analyze your competitors for new keywords you want to target. You'll see a report within Ubersuggest in the competitor analysis that just shows you all the keywords your competitors rank for. And I want you to look at the ones that are relevant to your business and go after them. The next feature in Ubersuggest you should check out is the SERP analysis within the keyword ideas report. So we're already in the keyword ideas report, but when you click on a keyword, you can see all the top 10 people ranking for that keyword, the backlinks, the social shares, the strength of the websites, other topics that are mentioned by the competitors, and this will give you idea of, hey, this is how I create content that covers the whole topic. For example, if you're creating content around paid ads, it's not just about paid ads, it's paid ads, then you can have a topic cluster and go in-depth into things like Google ads, Facebook ads, Reddit ads, Instagram ads, um, TikTok ads, Snapchat ads, LinkedIn ads, right? So when you do that, you're more likely to rank. Now that we're going away from Ubersess, what I want you to also focus on is writing content that is at least 50% better than everyone else who's ranking for that keyword. Look, if you're just gonna create more Me Too content, then you're not gonna do that well. If you go above and beyond, you will do better. Now, last but not least, I wanna wrap up this video by covering a few other things that you should know. On-page SEO will produce better outcomes if you're managing an older website. In the early days, you can pretty much solve your on-page SEO by just decreasing your load time. And if you decrease your load time, your page will load faster, and which also boosts conversion rates, but also making sure not to use too large images with too high resolutions, you wanna compress them. And as you create new content, you wanna work on your title tags, meta description tags, heading tags, which just helps you rank. You wanna have a sitemap. Having a sitemap just helps ensure that Google can crawl your pages. And you wanna take the XML sitemap and submit it to Google Search Console. You wanna have a good mobile experience. If you have a lot of text-based articles, use the AMP framework, which just makes the mobile experience way better and make sure that your robots.txt or your meta tags, you're not blocking any of the major crawlers or any pages that you shouldn't be blocking. And just overall, if you had to break it down when I cover all these tactics in this video of how much time you should be spending on them, for the on-page basics, you should spend a couple days to a week setting up you know, your CDN, your cache, your image compression, AMP, sitemap, uh, robots.txt. You can even use plugins like um, the Yoast SEO plugin. And when it comes to creating content, you should be spending two to eight hours per week, depending on how competitive your niche is and how amazing your content needs to be in order to outperform your competition. And when it comes to editing content, four to 10 hours per month, if you really tuned into content performance metrics and you wanna devote time into exploring opportunities from let's say getting things from page two to page one or boosting conversions but that's how much time you should spend. And to clarify on the on-page side, that should be more of a one-off thing. And then once you get it going, you should still fine tune it, you know, maybe a few times a month or um, once a quarter or once a year, depending on how often you're changing your site and how big your site is. If your site's really big, you could actually spend a lot of time on on-page SEO and it could be a daily thing. You may have people full-time focused on it. If you need help with your SEO, check out my ad agency, Neil Patel Digital. If you enjoyed the video, like it, share it, tell the people about it. Thank you for watching.